Chapter 1064, Egghead Island arc. We came back from an amazing chapter last week where the Straw Hats meet a police kuma and Bonnie spills the beans on the fact that he's her father. But the main treat of last week's chapter was that Law was fighting against Blackbeard, Van Auger, Jesus Burgess, Doc Hugh, and his horse Stronger. And it seems like the Heart Pirates and the Blackbeard Pirates are going at it in order to grab the others' Honoglyph rubbings. This week's chapter is titled Egghead Lab Phase. The cover story actually confirms that Kuzan is indeed a Blackbeard pirate and not just simply some ally. It says Kuzan and Van Auger, the Blackbeard pirates, have left Chocolate Town, while also suggesting that the cover story was indeed taking place during the raid on Onigashima. This explains how we see Van Auger fighting against Law while at the same time being at Chocolate Town in the cover story. We pick up the fight between Law and Blackbeard and it seems like Blackbeard has the advantage. Although let's be honest, the whole time Blackbeard was 5v1-ing Law. Law tries to separate Teach's limbs using one of his abilities called Amputate. However, Blackbeard cancels out his double fruit using his Yami Yami no Mi. Elsewhere, we see Pudding as a hostage in Blackbeard's ship, the Saber of Zebek. She may have awakened her third eye, which would allow her to reap Honoglyphs. Otherwise, why else would Blackbeard and the others want her? She tells some of Blackbeard's men, if Mama were alive, she would shut you all up. Is she implying that Big Mom is dead? Because let's be honest, Oda does not have what it takes to kill Big Mom or Kaido. My guess is that what he did is he threw them in a volcano just so that he can remove them from the story, focus on the other characters, and then bring them back for the final war. Whether it's as allies or if enemies, it doesn't matter. My personal guess is that they're gonna be allies to Luffy in some way, shape, or form in the same way that Crocodile was an ally in Marineford, just because they have a common enemy in the form of the world government. Meanwhile, we see the Heart Pirates, including Beppo and Jean Bart, fighting against the Blackbeard Pirates, including Van Auger, Jesus Burgess, Doc Q, and Stronger. Thank goodness for once, we actually get to see the Heart Pirates show off their abilities, unlike other times. I mean, how do you go an entire raid without once showing off a single ability. That was the perfect opportunity for Beppo to show off his Sulong form. But no, why do that? Elsewhere, we move over to check up on a Kainu who apparently is aware of the fight going on between Law and Blackbeard. And the island at which this is taking place is called Winter Island. I mean, it's nice to have the name of the island, but at the same time, there's really not much else to say on that besides Blackbeard is gonna be the winner. <laughs> we go back to Egghead Island and we see Luffy, Chopper, Jinbei, and Bonnie who have for some reason been turned to four-year-olds and she is affecting the others in the area and just causing them to shift ages. Is that a possible awakening? Could it be that Bonnie has indeed awakened her fruit? I remember that back in Sabaody, we saw her turn her opponents, the marines, into children. That's food for thought right there. Bonnie goes on to reveal that Kuma was actually sentenced to life because he was different in the sense that he's not human. He is actually from a special race. Although we're not told what that race is, but could it be that he's Lunarian to some extent? Maybe not fully Lunarian, but at least part way since he doesn't have the white hair or the flames behind his back. We know how the world government feels about Lunarians, and we know that Lunarians also happen to be dark-skinned. That could indicate something. Usopp, Sanji, Robin, Frankie, and Nami all change their outfits and head out to meet Punk-01, Shaka, the Vegapunk satellite that embodies the goodwill of his personality. On the other hand, Brooke and Zoro instead decide to stay back and guard the Sunny. Isn't it ironic how Zoro, the one who told Vegapunk that they have demands, is the one that decided to stay behind? We skip over the Vegapunk-01 Shaka, who seems to be in a Denden Mushi call with the Revolutionary Army, which he actually sees seems to be a part of. That was supposed to be one of my future videos, but I guess it's ruined now. I had already theorized in my head that Vegapunk is a part of the Revolutionary Army, but I do see the steampunk theme going on with the Revolutionary Army as well as Vegapunk, as well as Kuma actually, and not to forget Limburg. But anyways, we end off the chapter with Vegapunk talking to Monkey D. Dragon, of all people. He's basically telling Dragon, just to let you know, I'm about to die. <laughs> the government's about to kill me. The chapter ends off and it is a break next week, which is all right. It gives us some breathing room. It gives us some time to like think about what's gonna happen and most importantly it gives Oda the chance to take a break which he undoubtedly deserves. This chapter brings up some questions like is Big Mom actually dead? Did Jewelry Bonnie indeed awaken her fruit? What is Kuma's race? Is he a descendant from the Lunarians perhaps? And why did Zoro decide to stay behind if he had his own demands to make? Anyways great chapter. I personally give it a B plus although an argument could be made for an A minus even because this was a great chapter. But regardless the common question of the day is how will Dragon react to the news of Vega Punk's imminent death. Will he perhaps show up at Egghead Island personally? Or will he maybe send out some revolutionary army members? Could that mean that Dragon and Luffy's meeting is next? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Like, favorite, and subscribe. Have a good one.